Well, the representations mostly center on various issues. For instance, the question of fees, the question of costs, and the rules setting out specifically what the powers of chairpersons are. Without, without boring your, your viewers, the Industrial Tribunal regulations uh, provide for very little specific guidance on what chairpersons can and cannot do, whereas the English regulations set out very fully what it is that chairpersons can do within those powers. And therefore, we intend to adapt but very much follow the UK rules and bring those powers to the chairpersons. And on the question of fees, what is the government thinking? On the question of fees, I've already said in Parliament that the government will not be introducing fees, and the reason is twofold. There has been a vertiginous drop in the number of cases being brought to the Industrial Tribunal since the introduction of fees, and we think that that would be to deny a person who may have been unfairly dismissed to access justice. But secondly, it's a very interesting statistic, the reason that the coalition government, or one of the reasons why the coalition government gave in introducing fees, was because they wanted to do away with claims which were vexatious and unreasonable. So you would have thought that by introducing fees, which means that the person who's been unfairly dismissed is so sure of his case that he will pay the fee, you would think that the employee would always win. But the ratio of losses and wins to employers and employees were the same, which has meant that the fees have had no appreciable impact on that question. I suppose the Chamber of Commerce will be quite disappointed with what you've just said because, as you were mentioning yourself, it is one of their main demands that there should be uh, an introduction of fees, which they say reduces the number of cases that are taken to a tribunal. Yes, I have already uh, brought this point up with the President of the Chamber of Commerce, but I've told them that the way that the reforms will deal with cases that are thought by a chairperson to be frivolous or vexatious or unreasonable is by allowing the chairperson to award real costs against the person whom, in the opinion of the chairman, has brought a vexatious claim. And the Chamber is satisfied with that? Well, we haven't fully discussed the, the entirety of the proposals, but I'm sure that when we sit down, they will see the point that on the basis of the statistics in the UK, that all that is shown is that there's been an 80% drop in the number of people access, accessing justice, but that the introduction of the fees has not meant that every single case brought by the employee has been won, which was the point of introducing the fees. I think we would be able to reach the suitable compromise, which is to punish people who bring uh, cases which may be considered to be stupid by way of costs. And in respect of another of the Chamber's demands that there should be a reintroduction of the upper limit that a tribunal can award, is that something the government is looking at? Well, in respect of the basic award and the fact that the upper limit was uh, was removed by Minister Vosano, that was done simply to restore the position as it was uh, before uh, Minister, uh, Mr Montiel changed the position. But whereas we do not think that we will um, introduce a general cap on the basic award, we will certainly lay out in the rules how the basic award is to be calculated so that there will be specific guidelines enshrined in secondary legislation on the method of computation so that that will provide the respondent a way of knowing what amount it is that they may be liable to pay. Okay, and uh, very finally, it is of course a specific manifesto commitment of the GSOP Liberals that there should be uh, a reform of the industrial tribunal system before the election. You're running out of time. Well, I may be running out of time. If the Chief Minister were to call the election today, of course, I wouldn't have been able to complete it. Uh, but I've got to work on the basis that I will be able to complete the reforms. And I think that if I'm allowed the window to do so, we should be able to have them completed by before the end of this parliamentary re uh, session, which will be by the end of July.